It's been a couple of weeks since the finale of season 2 of Harlots has aired and we still don't have confirmation whether the show is being renewed or I don't even want to use the word cancelled because I can't, I can't even think about that. So I'm just gonna say we're still waiting on the confirmation for um, Harlots renewal. There's still no word at all about whether there will be a season three. I've seen quite a few fans on Twitter tweeting Hulu asking them to renew Harlots and that's been good. It's slowed down now a little bit because it's been a couple of weeks since the finale but I do believe that Hulu are paying attention and that's good. I think they're seeing that there is more interest and more passionate interest in the show this time around compared to season one, even though season one was just incredible, it's just that for season two more people are hearing about it and also there's more sort of diversity and diverse love stories on the on the show and I think that's really grabbed the fans attention and word of the show has kind of started to spread like wildfire which is really good. However, we don't have confirmation for a third season and I don't want people to slowly begin to lose interest or forget about the show. We still need to keep interest going and, and we still need to keep tweeting Hulu to ask them to renew for a third season. So I thought I would do something a little different, something I have never ever ever done before and that is read fanfiction to a camera for you to watch and listen if if you want to. I do have to note that reading out loud is actually one of my biggest fears. <laughs> I know it's stupid and it's not a big deal but to me it's a huge deal and I'm really really terrified but I'm, I'm willing to put myself through this because I really care about the show and I really care about this ship, um, Lady Harlot, which the fanfiction is going to be about. So yeah, so here we are. I don't, I don't I have no idea how this is going to go. I hope I don't make a fool out of myself, which is quite possible and not really that unusual. But whatever, I'm just going to give it a go. I hope, I sincerely hope I can do this story justice because I know it will be well written. I know it's well written. I haven't read it yet, so I don't actually know the story. So we will get to find out at the same time what, what happens in the story. Anyway, so to back up just a little bit. So I will be reading this fan fiction out loud. The whole point of this is to get fans more involved, to keep interest in the show going, to keep interest in the ship going as well. So if you are a fan of the show and, and you're watching this video, please, I'm begging you, take a moment and go on Twitter. I, I bet you thought you heard the last of me on this. Sorry, you didn't. I'm back. So here is more. I'm begging you <laughs> to please go on Twitter and tweet Hulu directly because they're the ones in charge. They're the ones who made, who produced this show. Tweet them directly and ask them to please hashtag Renew Harlots. Okay, that's, that's the theme going around. So just ask Hulu to Renew Harlots. If you remember, do it periodically, whenever. We're just trying to keep interest going. We do not want the show to get cancelled and right now we just don't know what's gonna happen. Also, if you're a fan of this particular ship, Lady Harlot, which is what the fanfiction is about, feel free to also go on, on Twitter and while you're hashtagging Renew Harlot, say I love Lady Harlot or like tweet the writers. They're, the writers of the show, some of them are on Twitter. You can tweet them yourself and say I really love these two characters, I love them together. I think the more people express interest and show their love and appreciation for what we've seen so far, they're more likely to give us more of that. So just go on Twitter and show them lots of love. Tell them how wonderful their show is because it really is and, and let them know what you would like to see more of. I think maybe they'll listen and so maybe if we do get a third season hopefully we will get more of these characters and hopefully we will get more of them together. As things are now 
the way Lady Harlot kind of ended in the finale wasn't the most... Well, it just things took a weird turn a little bit, I think. Like, I really liked the finale in so many ways, but this whole Lady Harlot thing just completely took me by surprise because what Isabella kind of did took a really odd turn and I still don't know how I feel about it what I do know is that I'm not very impressed with her <laughs> I do still ship them together very much but I do think if we do get a third season she will have to put in the effort to get Charlotte to hopefully forgive her somehow like actually prove to her that she is worthy of her I don't know trust and all that cuz yeah, I mean, she did do what she had to do in order to protect herself and her kid. I get that, but at the same time, it's like, mm, you didn't have to sell out the girls. Like, you could have worked with them. I know, you know, you were running out of time and all that, but um, I was not very impressed with what happened there. So I'm hoping that, you know, when season three comes, they'll go through some, some really sexy angst. <laughs> And we'll be able to kind of work it out and, and still be friends, gal pals, whatever, the, whatever you want to call it. Lesbian friends. Anyways. So this particular fan fiction was written by a lovely person I, I got to meet online. On Twitter and on Tumblr she's known as Fish. On Archive of Our Own, she's known as Scarlet. I will put links to all of her stuff below, so you'll be able to read her fanfiction and find her online. And she was gracious enough to actually write this fanfiction specifically for this purpose of me reading it out loud on YouTube. She will make it available like in text form on Archive of Our Own at some point, maybe in a couple of weeks. But... I will be the first one to sort of put it out there through this video and I'll probably have to break it down into two maybe even three parts depending on, on how we go time wise but if this is something that you like or enjoyed hopefully if I don't ruin it too much maybe we'll get to do more in the future I don't know you can let me know what you think or maybe some other random fan fiction that I find on Lady Harlot we'll see I don't actually know anything about this particular fiction. I haven't read it, so I will get to find out what happens at the same time as you. But what I do know is that the author kind of wanted to find a plausible way of exploring um, Charlotte and Isabella's relationship post-finale of season two. That's all I know. So the fan fiction is called The Bequest, and this is a note from the author. She said, this is my attempt at fixing Lady Harlot. I hope you enjoyed as much as I enjoyed writing it. My deepest thanks to my kick-ass Hufflepuff05, who I think was her proofreader. And what would we do without our proofreaders, right? And she said, For Eden, may Lady Harlot live forever. Yes. Yes, please. Okay. Here we go. Oh my god. I am shitting myself. Okay. Let's begin. <clears throat> You're not going to open it? Nancy asks, lounging back on her chair, cleaning her rods. Charlotte pushes the letter further away from her on the kitchen table. I don't need to. I know what it says. Sorry I was a backstabbing bitch who chose my evil murderous brother over you. Nancy sums up sarcastically. Charlotte plays with her spoon. Her porridge has gone cold. So she's still eating porridge. The knot in her stomach makes everything taste bland and unappealing. Desperate people do desperate things, she tells Nancy. If you're going to defend her, you might as well read her fucking letter, Nancy smirks. <laughs> Charlotte stands up abruptly, snatches the letter from the table. Nothing she writes can make me forget what she did to us, she says, chucking the letter on top of the glowing embers in the fireplace. Why would you do that? Read the fucking letter. She stares as the paper shrinks and blackens, as small blue flames arise to lick its edges, the elegant script spelling her name vanishing into ashes. Ooh. It hurts because you care, my love. 
Nancy says softly behind her. Charlotte whips around. I care that Blaine is not rotting in a cell. I care that he and his pack of vile dogs keep going after innocent girls like Abigail, she snaps. Nancy drops the linen cloth she's been using to wipe her rods on the table. She catches and holds Charlotte's wounded gaze. Are you sure that's all it is? She asks gently. Fuck off, Nance. Charlotte, her eyes welling up, leaves the room, rushing past her father down the hallway. What's up with her? William North asks as he steps inside the kitchen. Nancy reaches for the bottle of gin in front of her. She found her heart and doesn't know what to do with it, she tells him. That's really cool. I really like this so far. Okay. A few days later. I need to see Charlotte, Isabella demands, standing outside the Wells Greek Street house. You're no longer welcome here, William North tells her, not budging from the door's entrance. Oh, she came. Over, I mean. I must talk to her at once, Isabella pleads. She hasn't replied to any of my letters. You've got some nerve showing up here. If you were a man, I would knock you on your pompous, treacherous ass, William growls, clenching his fists. Isabella flinches, takes a couple of steps back. I did what I had to, to protect my daughter. Wouldn't you do anything to protect your family, Mr. North? Isabella asks somewhat haughtily. I would. I am. Presently, I'm protecting my own daughter. From you. She doesn't want to see you. Leave her alone and go back to your wretched kin, Lady Fitz. <sighs> Isabella glares at him. Then grabbing her skirts, she turns around and marches away. Alone in the upstairs parlor, Charlotte stands by the window, watching as Lady Fitz disappears up the street. Time out. So, I forgot to mention, we've established after the finale that the St. James's house that Lady Isabella moves to is a 15 minute walk from, from Charlotte's house on Greek Street. So, just saying. What is it? Lucy's voice suddenly queries behind her. Charlotte plasters a smile on her face before casting her sister a glance over her shoulder. Nothing, Spratt. Shouldn't you be entertaining Mr. Whitmore? Lucy shrugs. Hannah is keeping him busy, she says, taking a bottle of brandy from a side table before disappearing again. Charlotte steps away from the window. She runs a hand over the gold wooden curls of the parlor's blue chaise as she walks past it, her thoughts flying back to the night when she and Isabella, the cursed and the damned, had sealed their unlikely friendship with a kiss, with many, many breathless kisses. The courtesan and the courtier, peculiar alliances such as theirs, were not meant to last. Charlotte understands this now, even if her body, which still hums from the touch of Isabella's lips on her skin like a struck tuning fork, doesn't just yet. Charlotte pinches the bridge of her nose, takes a deep breath, smooths the front of her dress, then goes back to her room to do her books. The pleasure gardens are as busy and colorful as they were last year, with its usual lot of drunk lords and bright-eyed harlots running over its lawns. Charlotte walks by the jugglers and fire eaters, while above her head the occasional burst of fireworks illuminates the night sky. Good evening, Miss Wells. I do not believe I sent you an invitation this year. Charlotte flinches as she recognizes the Marquess of Blaine's voice. She composes her face carefully before facing him. Liddington is with him, as well as several weak-chinned lords she doesn't know. I have no desire to be seen at your table, my lord, lest the stench of your decaying soul would spoil my wine. Wow! Wait, I need to read this again. I have no desire to be seen at your table, my lord, lest the stench of your decaying soul would spoil my wine. What a line. She tells the Marquis with a smile that belies the venom of her words. Venom indeed. Harcourt's answering grin curves like a blade. Careful, Miss Wells. 
My sister might tire of being your shield one day. I have no need for your sister's protection, Charlotte tells him, eye rising in her throat. Blaine's smile stretches wider, uglier. Goodness, did Isabella come back to her senses? Has she forsaken you already? Kick the whore that you are back into the filthy gutter you came from. The men behind him all start to chuckle. As Charlotte opens her mouth to reply, she feels a firm hand slide around her arm, forcing her to turn. Miss Wells, how delightful to see you here. Lady Fitz greets her, pulling her away from Harcourt. Please, take a turn with me. How is my Lady Fitz voice? <laughs> Wait, I'm going to do this again. <clears throat> Miss Wells, how delightful to see you here. Please. Take a turn with me. Her voice is pleasant, but her hard eyes hold an unmistakable warning as she wraps her fingers like a steel band around Charlotte's wrist. Blaine shoots his sister an irritated look, but doesn't stop her. You are utterly reckless. Isabella scolds once they are safely away from the Marquis and his friends. Charlotte pulls her arm sharply away from Isabella's grip. I am reckless when you allowed your depraved sibling and his degenerate brotherhood of killers to escape justice. She looks Isabella up and down. Did you buy that lovely dress with your 30 pieces of silver? Charlotte, Isabella begins to say. How many more girls has he raped and killed since last year? Charlotte cuts her. But such trifles do not matter to you, do they? What's another servant girl to people of your milieu? Isabella Blanche's visibly hurt Charlotte would think her so heartless. Lydia Quigley is in Bedlam. He no longer has a procuress, she says. Charlotte scoffs. Surely you can't be this naive. Quigley isn't the only board in London who caters to the appetites of men like your brother. And you are equally naive to think a signed confession from Lord Fallon obtained under duress would be enough to take my brother down, Isabella retorts sharply. Charlotte shakes her head bitterly. You didn't give us a chance to even try. All it would have accomplished is getting you all killed, Isabella insists. Charlotte's sudden laugh is unexpected, but there is no mirth in it. Please, do not use the pretense of mercy to justify your selfishness. Isabella holds Charlotte's harsh gaze defiantly. Yes, I was selfish for putting the needs of my daughter above yours and other unknown strangers, for not wanting to read in the Grub Street press that your lifeless body has been found in the Thames. You do not realize how powerful my brother truly is, but I do. His friends are dukes and princes with the ear of the king. The law has no hold on men like them. So what? We just ignore him and get on with our lives? How can your daughter ever be safe if, as you say, nothing can be done to stop him doing whatever the hell he wants? Charlotte says, voice shaking with indignation. How can you keep on living with him knowing what he's capable of? I've known what he was capable of since I was 13, Isabella replies stiffly. Charlotte blinks, her anger suddenly deflated, and Isabella feels something loosen in her chest as she catches a brief glimmer of compassion in Charlotte's eyes. It is soon gone, elusive as a spark, but it is a start. My brother and I no longer live under the same roof, Isabella continues. My daughter is safe now, and so am I. There are ways to contain Harcourt, but you cannot rely on the law alone to do so. Charlotte frowns, curious in spite of herself. How? What did you do? There is a stone bench a couple of yards away from where they are standing. Isabella gestures gracefully towards it. Will you sit with me? she asks. Charlotte hesitates and Isabella lays a careful hand on her arm. Please, Charlotte. I know you are angry with me, but will you at least listen to what I have to say? Charlotte holds Isabella's pleading eyes for a long time. You'd better not ask me to forgive you, she warns as she heads for the bench. I won't, Isabella promises. 
I am exceedingly aware I do not deserve it, she adds as they both sit down. Isabella folds her hands over her exquisitely embroidered silk gown. You once told me that if I wanted to shatter the chamber of mirrors my brother kept me trapped in, I should locate a weakness and press. So I did. Oh, don't you dare lay this at my feet, Charlotte counters, pulling back, disgust plain on her face. Isabella grabs her hand hastily. I can assure you that I am not. Please, allow me to finish. Charlotte snatches her hand back, but remains seated. My brother has one weakness, Isabella continues. One thing that, try as he might, he cannot fully control or tame. Me. Everything he ever did was to keep me from leaving him. He knows I do not love him, that I am repelled by his abject lust for me. So he takes out his rage and frustration on other women. Isabella locks eyes with Charlotte. But you know, you know this better than anyone. Charlotte shrugs. He wasn't the first girl to take his anger out on me, and he probably won't be the last. Isabella's eyes soften. There is so much strength in you, Charlotte, and I admire you tremendously for it, Isabella says, causing Charlotte to click her tongue. But I have no strength of my own to press or shatter anything, no means to set myself free until that day. Charlotte sighs. You told him where Fallon was in exchange for your money. Isabella lowers her eyes. My money, a house away from him, and the promise that no harm would befall you. My shield, Charlotte mutters under her breath. Isabella looks up. I beg your pardon? Charlotte turns her head slightly, pointing her chin towards the place where they had left the Marquis. Your brother said you were my shield earlier. I wasn't sure what he meant until now. Charlotte says in a low voice, and Isabella can hear just how much the knowledge affects her. I never expected to be part of your deal with the devil, she adds, sounding so defeated, so tired, that Isabella aches once more from the all-encompassing weight of her betrayal that sits in her stomach like a jagged stone. Please, please, try to understand. Sophia was in grave danger. I could not wait for Harcourt to be arrested. It could have taken days. I didn't want him to... Charlotte, you know he would have, have damned her too, Isabella says, her voice full of anguish. I knew my actions would cost me a friendship, but I needed to ensure you would be safe for I could not bear the cost of losing you. Isabella's chest heaves with the weight of her sorrow, her eyes bright with tears. And I still cannot. Your absence has been quite unbearable. She finishes, casting her eyes down once again. The harsh, acerbic words Isabella expects in return never come. When she finally dares look back up, Charlotte is covering her face with her hand and Isabella isn't sure if she's trying to contain her rage or her grief. Having nothing left to lose, she leans forward and gently wraps her arms around Charlotte. And against all odds, Charlotte melts into her embrace, her hand slipping around Isabella's waist to clutch at her back. <sighs> I am so sorry, Isabella whispers in her hair. Charlotte's shoulders begin to shake. Damn you, damn you, she curses, her breath hitching in the crook of Isabella's neck. I am already damned, Isabella thinks, but does not say. Isabella feels Charlotte's tears on her skin, and moments later, Charlotte's lips as well. It isn't quite a kiss, just her lips resting there pressed against the base of Isabella's throat, warm and soft as a rose petal. I miss you, Isabella sighs, 
curling her fingers at the nape of Charlotte's neck. Two drunk revelers wobble past them, causing both women to quickly pull away from each other. Charlotte wipes the tears on her cheeks with the back of her hand, shakes her head as if to clear her mind. I should go, she says, standing up. Damn it! Isabella follows suit. Thank you for listening to me, she says earnestly. She wants to ask Charlotte to stay. She wants to take her home, undress her and take her to bed. But she knows she cannot. Isabella is painfully aware that the day she betrayed Charlotte Wells was the day she forfeited her right to ask anything of her. That's right, bitch. Charlotte nods stiffly and Isabella watches her walk away and disappear in the crowd. Wow, okay, so that was kind of intense. We're now halfway through the fanfiction, so I'm gonna stop here for now. And I'm gonna continue in another video soon.